Welcome to this episode of Small Bike Stuff. This is another episode of Around the World or Round the World, the series where we film people's bikes from around the world with their help. Today we've got a Honda Dash 125 from Malaysia filmed by Hazim. And if you want to learn how to get your bike on the channel, stay through till the end of the video and I'll give you all the information you need to know. Take it away, Hazim. Hello everyone, my name is Hazim and I'm from Malaysia. And as you can see here, this is my Honda Dash 125. It is a typical underbone motorcycle which was assembled locally, of which the parts of it, of it was were made overseas, but it was assembled over here. Alright, we'll pause it right there. He's saying that this bike was assembled within Malaysia, but with some parts from overseas and some parts locally. Uh, that's super common. So there's a, a Honda factory in Malaysia called... Boon Seal. Boon Seal was the first importer um, of Hondas into Malaysia and you'll find that kind of the first person that jumped on the Honda bandwagon back in the 60s or 70s and all of these Southeast Asian nations ended up kind of being the main importer and now they have their own factories and stuff. Same with Honda Thailand, that's a similar story, but this here is Boon Seal Honda. So let's jump back into it and see what Hazem wants to show us about his Honda Dash 125. It is ironically though only made for the Malaysian market but it's okay actually this is actually a very reliable motorcycle let's have a look on the engine this is the engine so the engine here have a compression ratio of 9.3 to 1 uh, 9.8 horsepower 135cc of displacement torque uh, as much as 9.54 newton meters single cylinder four stroke air cooled SOHC and it does the job pretty well. We'll pause it there. It does do the job pretty well, I know, because I've got the exact same motor in my Honda Wave 125 here in New Zealand. Um, you know, there might be slight differences because they're built in different factories, but um, that's the same thing. I've got the same kickstart, I've got the same side cover there, the clutch adjustment is in the exact same place. So, um, yeah, really reliable engine, um, and yeah, single cylinder, four stroke, overhead uh, cam, and two valves. So, yeah, wicked little machine. What else you got to show us, Hazim? And if we have a look on this side, you can see the gears. Pretty straightforward. This one here to increase, and this one here is to decrease the gears. Let's have a look on the tire. The tire here, what I'm using over here for the front is a Dunlop TT100, and the size is here. I'm just going to pause it slightly there because. You can see uh, he's got a hat on <laughs> that has an Australia logo on it. Mate, I'm from New Zealand. What are you doing? <laughs> That's all good. Anyway, continue on about these Dunlop tyres. 70, 90, 17 size uh, tyre. The rim is an original Honda rim. Same, same goes to this uh, disc brake. The disc brake over here is original as well, stock, I've, I didn't change any of these, although I, in the future I have been planning to actually change the rim to a spoke type, but uh, I have some financial issues so it doesn't become a reality yet. Don't worry brother, we all have financial issues. I wouldn't say that. I'd just say you're a hard worker, you're saving hard, you've got a wicked motorcycle that doesn't need to be changed yet. Um, never, never, no one should ever blame, you know, if you've got a working running machine, that's good enough. You don't need to worry about making it different. If you can make it different and you've got the opportunity to do so, that's awesome. But Hazen, this is still a wicked bike and I'm really, really jealous of it, specifically because uh, a couple of things, I've paused it and I can see in the background that you've got a rear disc brake. I don't have a rear disc brake on my Wave, so that's a really really awesome feature hopefully you'll talk about it right now or very shortly and the rear over here is a Dunlop Roadmaster TT100 as well the size is 80 90 17 and as you can see here this is the chain of the motorcycle 
the operation is quite straightforward this is the ignition key when you turn it on you only turn on the position light to start the engine either you're going to use uh, this kick start or you're going to use this hand start so it's usually like this or you could do it like this oops sorry my bad there you go yeah sorry for the mistake over there right signal for the right for the left there's no hazard signal though so I mean I could actually modify it to actually have a sick hazard lights but not but I'm not going to do it right now turn it off it's quite simple this throttle a handbrake over here auto clutch so I don't need to actually pull the clutch to actually change the gears this is the brakes the rear brake over here and this is the knee basket the infamous knee basket yeah I put some stuff over here here because it's convenient actually originally I use a plastic knee basket but then I change it to a metal type it is more sturdy right now and this one here is the netting for the seat I'm just going to pause it there on the netting for the seat. So he's talked about a lot of stuff and I just kind of let him go for it um, because it's really interesting hearing people talk about their own bikes in their own way. Um, the dash was really interesting. I might put a little shot of it on the screen now. Quite a bit different to my Honda Wave, um, but really nice little color scheme there. Doesn't need hazard lights. I totally understand that. And um, the electric and kickstart is a, is a nice combo as well. What I do like, though, is um, the fact that he, he, the disc brake's just totally normal to him, I think, on the rear, whereas for me, that's a big deal. Um, my Honda Wave only has a drum on the rear. And this netting, the seat netting here, which is the original reason I paused it so I could talk, uh, these are super essential in hot climates. Um, they allow airflow between your butts, butt cheeks, <laughs> your butts, um, your butt cheeks, and, uh, and, and, and if you don't have these, um, yeah, you can get pretty grim, especially on long rides. So I've got one of those on my Honda Wave here in New Zealand. My big trip through Malaysia and Thailand last time, I didn't have one, but the bike I get for my next trip will definitely have one of these because it makes a massive difference. It's the difference between being happy and able to sit down nicely at the end of like a week's riding and um, not being able to do that at all. <laughs> Kick back into it. As you can see over here. So this is aftermarket so that if I were to sit on this motorcycle on a sunny day, I wouldn't burn myself, so to speak. And there's a compartment over here. I mean, sorry for the mess, but uh, over here I put some stuff that would help me along the way. Like, for example, chain lube, the manual and the service, service book, some tissue just in case I need to check the oil which is located over here, the oil engine and this, this one here to tie some study up, uh, some stuff up and so on and so forth I mean yeah it's a, it's a mess over there but still convenient though this is the petrol tank 4 liters of petrol inside here I mean the max of it of course, I'm not sure how, how many I have in this left So yeah, and this is the top box, TV top box. I put my helmet inside here. All right, now it's a really good place to pause it because I've got a good view of that rack. You see the um, support that's coming down under the tail light there, and uh, it joins up onto the first point of connection just above that uh, yellow reflector above where the keys ignition, uh, the key opens for the for the underseat storage. Which also on my wave, the key for the underseat storage is opened from the ignition, so that's a little bit of a difference there. And the underseat storage is a little bit less than what a Honda Wave has. I think it's a narrower bike. I mean, the Wave 125s are quite wide, so it makes sense. But that rack, it joins on to the rear grab rail, and then it goes further under and joins on to the top of the um, the rear shock mount as well. So it's got two points of connection there. 
and then it's got the nice big flat bit for the Jivy top box and Jivy stuff or Givy, however you want to say it, is actually um, a lot of it's made in Malaysia. There's a Malaysian factory, so yeah, um, pretty cool to 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 see one. Of, well, I've seen these before, but it's pretty cool to showcase all these off the shelf parts that are just available for these bikes in Malaysia. Well, most of the time, of course. This one here is actually a uh, from a Honda Vario, which is actually a scooter. I've, I fitted it inside here to replace the original signal light. So when I'm riding, I usually use two hands, and sometimes one-handed only because I don't have to uh, be worried about clutch because it is an automatic clutch. Uh, from my experience, this motorcycle handles things well. I mean, I have gone through an accident of when I had this motorcycle earlier, but I got this motorcycle fixed and it still runs well. It is, however, slow for it come when it comes to its uh, displacement. If you want to compare it to uh, Yamaha, Yamaha Legenda 115 which only has a cc of uh, displacement of 115 cc it can overtake this motorcycle easily but this motorcycle is actually economically good as it uses less fuel uh, if, if I recall correctly the the mileage I could get is around 50 to 60 kilometers a liter by this motorcycle which is actually pretty good that's really good that's really really good 50 to 60 k's per liter you got a four liter tank you know if you're uh, doing it really nicely then you've got a couple of hundred kilometers per tank which is pretty impressive and the point that he says there about the yamaha legenda you know 115 being able to overtake this thing it's it's somewhat true uh but it's one of those things where like does it really matter that you've got a bike that can go faster i mean most people aren't buying these for speed and if they are they're modifying them so it's just one of those things where um honda designs things if they're, they're famous for this worldwide designing something that's capable of a lot of power tuning it right down and um, getting maximum fuel economy and um, just being a reliable bike so yeah, you've got a reliable fuel economical machine so I use this motorcycle as I've mentioned to go to university and at times when during the, uh, there's a heavy downpour uh, and there's some small flood I at times I accidentally went through it and the motorcycle survived somehow and yeah it's a Honda so, I mean I've mentioned before I think that uh, Yamaha is more popular than Honda but you have to be credit to Honda because they have made affordable and good quality motorcycles like this one. And yeah, I really love it. Thank you for watching and... Have a nice day. Oh, by the way, this one has four, four gears. So, yeah. Happy trails, everyone. <laughs> happy trails everyone that's so cool thank you Hazim for for creating this wonderful piece of uh, information that will stay on the internet forever and teach people in the western world english speaking western world about the honda dash 125 uh it's very similar to the honda wave there are a few differences uh and they actually did sell the honda malaysia is an interesting market they sell the honda wave 125 the honda future 125 and the honda dash 125 all at the same time all at the same engine um, the honda future and the honda wave were virtually exactly the same and the honda dash is notoriously um kind of like the zippier version as in like it's a bit far designed to look like it's faster it's not actually faster um but it's got uh the front and rear disc which i think the wave might not have necessarily had or it was an option but they didn't all come with them and um the underseat storage is a little bit less than the honda wave 125 as well um, it might be a cost thing as well. I'm not 100% sure on the cost differences, but maybe my Malaysian friends out there watching can update us and let us know. But I think it's super impressive. Um, Hazim, you did amazing. And this just goes to show everyone out there, English doesn't need to be your first language. You just need to be confident enough to pick up your phone, 
and film some stuff about it and then we can show the rest of the world what your bike is like in the country that you live if you want to do this if you want your bike to be on small bike stuff send me a message on either instagram which is instagram.com slash small bike stuff ig or facebook.com slash small bike stuff message me and ask for the template video i will send you the template video and it's got eight steps you can follow which is what hazim has done here and you can make a little video send it to me with a file transfer service and then i will put one of these videos together thank you so much for watching and hopefully we have more hondas from other countries around the world coming soon and other brands but uh we all know i'm a honda fanboy See you next time on Small Bike Stuff.